Hello, good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, depending on when you're watching this. My name is Lauren. I'm Ian. And tonight is the kettlebell workout. It's called strength and swings, but tonight I'd like to add another S word, a kettlebell snatch. We'll be working on our snatches over the next coming weeks with progressions and our cleans and presses, so stay tuned to that. We have our body weight to get warmed up with and a kettlebell or two off to the side for some get-up swings and snatches. Snatches. So stay tuned. Snatches are those progressions off of the kettlebell swing and the overhead press. We'll warm up both of those things first, and at any point in time, stick to those basics or feel free to expand your strength repertoire with the kettlebell snatch. Start with the palms facing forward and just make fists with the wrists. Then point the fingers back to the ground. Make fists again and bend on the wrists this time. Then flex on the elbows. We'll come here in some kettlebell cleans. This is called our rack position. Lightly take the fingertips to the middle, but then pull those hands apart so the pinkies face up. Elevate the shoulders, pull the shoulders down, and then point the fingers, extend on the wrists, and extend, excuse me, extend on the wrists, and then extend on the elbows. Lightly pull the shoulders together and reach towards behind you as if to touch those hands together. Then make fists with the fingers and then bend knuckles forward on the wrist. Continue to bend, pause here in the rack, pull those hands apart. Armpits go low, just like in that snatch movement, and then point the fingers to the back wall, extend through the wrist, and extend on the elbow, meaning straighten, and squeeze the shoulder blades together, just like in the swing, and return the hands back down. Add a shake and a wiggle. Maybe open up your stance. Let's go back up to the rib cage now, and we'll start with the head, and then a torso rotation. I'll look over my right to look towards Lauren, and with my shoulder blades squeezed, I'll rotate in that same direction. Then my head will go center, my torso will follow. Repeat, other side, chin tuck, rotate. Hips stay forward, head stays stable and the shoulder blades turn, and then head center and body follow. We'll use this pattern in the windmill of the get up, so add some gentle rotation, return the head to center, body to follow, and the last time, the head, shoulder squeeze, mobilize through that rib cage or T-spine, and go head back center and follow by the ribs. One last shoulder warm up for me and then we'll hand it over to Lauren here. Let's get both hands in that rack's position. Like the fists are full of helium balloons, just very effortlessly, let's take those hands towards your safe overhead. Did you shrug? Hopefully not, but if you did, shrug again, and if you didn't, let's just shrug. Then with stiff elbows, pack the shoulders and pull. Imagine your chin up or that kettlebell military press back to the rack position. Repeat one more time. So very low effort, but mindful to keep the shoulder blades low. Extend the elbows. Lightly break that rule as we get into a shrug. And then pack the armpits and pull back down. Open the fingers, extend on the wrists, and add a shake. More coming up with the kettlebell. First to Lauren. Excellent. We'll warm up that lower body in preparation for some lunges that we'll be doing in our getup as per usual. With our feet underneath us, let's gently first warm up our toes. I want nothing to change but you to pull your knee to the front. Get to that demi point or lunge foot position, then use your toes to point. Gently flex and round over those toes. Once you're here, could you keep your knee straight but wing your ankle out? And then pull your ankle back in. Once it's in line, get back to the tiptoes the demi point, the heel comes down and the hip extends, other side. Nothing changes, there might be a light transfer but not a shift or a dump in that hip. Point your toes, gently flex over. Once there, knee stays forward, ankle wings out, ankle pulls back in, over the toes, demi lunge foot, heel comes down, hip extends. Now let's take one of those legs and step it back into our lunge position as if we're going down from the get up. Right now, just pulling the floor together. That front shin stays vertical by pulling your front femur in and driving your other femur forward. So feel that pull down tension as you come towards the floor. Once you're here, check in that those hips are relatively level and we're not cranked up in one side. Get to that level position. Next, let's push down and out on the floor, creating some tension and just come back to that split stance again. 
Ooh. Once we're back up here, can we come to that front foot? So peeling that heel up off the floor. Now keeping that position, can you pull that hip back in and come all the way to the floor with that toe, uh, sorry, heel up, heel down, heel toe open. We'll do one rotation like our get up. Same arm as side leg across our body. Head rotates, upper body rotates, hip hinge, hand finds the floor straight out from that quad. Then make sure you stack the shoulders on top of each other. Head looks at the hand on the floor. Upper body will rotate close. Keep the knee to the side as you rotate. Try to keep that shoulder blade back so you're not just curling forward. Next, head will open. Upper body will open. Knee still stays to the side. Hand pushes away. Head and shoulders square up. Heel toe the foot to the front. Now to stand up, we put forward and back tension. Forward and back and then up together. Great. Same thing, other side. Other leg, step back. First, feel that pull. That front chin stays vertical as you pull that front hip or that front leg in. Back hip stays extended. Keep pulling yourself down to the floor. Maybe it's different on that side. That's okay. Let's get to that demi point just to feel it. And then heel down. Pushing forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Split stance. Now find that demi point rise. Pull together. Stay leveled hips. Stay level. Ooh, three, two, and then soft landing. Whoops, heel comes down, heel toes open. Same arm as side leg, cross body. Blades together, head, rib cage. Hinge, pushing your hips back so it's a soft landing on your hand. Stack over, head looks down, blades stay together, rib cage rotates. Then head opens up, body opens up. Breathe, rotate, hand pushes away, head and shoulders square up, front foot comes to the front, push forward and back and up to tall. Excellent. Let's do some heavy holds now and then we'll get into some get ups and uh, practice. I don't know my words right now. Towards Swing the progressions. Swings. Progressions, progressions. Great. Heavy holds first. Heavy holds. So I have a heavier bell and off to the side, and I'll be using that for some get ups. And this is a nice moderate bell here to get the grip strength going, as well as get in touch with the core. So we'll start with a low hold on each side. We'll set up our deadlift hinge, grab with one or two hands, and brace. Do you feel the preload? Then up, up to tall. Bell to the side, adjust your stance as you need. Hold for time. Avoid dipping to the side of the bell and instead find center. Prioritize strength with the bum cheeks, braced core with the abs. <laughs> then open the stance and the breathing and return the bell down. That was more just me quivering. Come up, barehanded. Repeat on the other side. Hip hinge, one hand or two. Feel the preload, <gasps> up to tall. Adjust your stance. It's likely that we dip to the side of the bell, so encourage yourself to stay strong in the middle Push your feet out, brace the core and test those abs, maintain your breath. And then two hands, adjust your stance and return. Shake it out. Let's keep it going. Keep it going. We'll take that into our rack position, which mimics our kettlebell clean. So it's our cheek clean. Single hand on the bell. You could use two. Preload, zip, and pull up into the rack. I like to press from here. Lauren's moved her feet a little bit. Where do you like to be strong? Up to you, not too narrow, not too wide, but find that Goldilocks position. Two hands on the bell, return. Whew. Come up barehanded, same thing other side. Avoid a twist, it's those hips that whew, push through and we end up in the rack. Squeeze the bell, vertical forearm, pack shoulder, test those abs, maintain your breath for three, two. Two hands on and down. There'll be one more position to explore today. Be using our presses today, so either with a push press or a strict military press, let's hold it overhead for a quick 10 second round. It's a hip hinge, it's a clean, and a push press would be using legs to get it overhead and hold it, adjust your stance. Straight elbow, as Lauren's showing here, that arm is in line with the ear, hold. Is that shoulder down, avoid the shrug, and then open your stance, pull the kettlebell down, and then return it to the floor with the rejuvenating shake. Last time, same thing, other side, before those get-ups. So pick it up, rack's position, 
Firm tension on the bell as you push. Hold it for time. Dominant hand, non-dominant hand, making sure it feels stable in both. Squeeze your butt cheeks, brace the core, pull the armpit down, and then pull down and return to the floor. Hmm. Well, Excellent. we'll snatch in a bit, but the basics like the get-ups first. So I feel pretty good with that bell, Lauren. How about you with yours? No, I want that bell. Right. So take that one off to the side. We'll switch out and encourage you to find that kettlebell that you can maintain integrity and safety in your lift, but also challenge your endurance as well as your full body strength. All right, we're going to start with our get-ups here today. We'll be doing three rounds. We'll do a get-up followed by a preparatory exercise to get us towards our snatches. Let's come down to the floor. We like to start on the floor with our get-up, whether it's body weight or with a kettlebell, no matter what. Cuddle. Cuddle it. Two-handed roll and press. Setting up, it's a hip drive. Pull to elbow. Find your hand. A bridge and a sweep. Pushing away. Here we are in that lunge position pushing forward and back to tall. Keeping that arm overhead as you pull yourself down. Front foot, rotate hinge, sweep, elbow, press away. Keep that spine nice and long as you come to the floor. We talked about in the past, one of those key things, when you're coming down to the floor, pushing away from your elbow, or driving against that lat and keeping that spine nice and long versus doing a reverse crunch. No crunch. No crunch. So Only cuddle in on my the, crunchy bar. Sorry, Lauren. I'm oh, just talking about crunching. Cuddle on the other side and follow that with the press. And we drive the hip, tall sit, bridge sweep, and square up that lunge. It's a tall stand. And then return to the floor in the lunge. Windmill, hinging, sweeping, tall sitting. Find the elbow to the back and two hands down. Whew. No hands up, just like Lauren in that get up. So the and first then, thing we're going to review tonight in preparation for our snatches. Now we will not be doing a full snatch tonight. I'll show you what it is, but we'll be working our progressions towards it tonight. Weeks to come, don't worry, nothing doesn't all happen at once. First, we have to review our single arm swing. So working in an I go, you go way, Lauren, just get right into that one arm swing. I'll be doing it in a second. So for the one arm on that bell, preload, pull. It's that chest height feel for five repetitions. Time it that you're in your plank for as long as you can and you're ballistic as you press out. After five for team Lauren, it's our turn to go. So team Ian's doing a single arm swing, starting with the shoulder pack hip hinge back. It's the hips that send the bell through at the top or in that plank and as you can hear matching that exhale to the hip drive. Whew. Fives feel good. Sometimes that first set is the hardest. Give yourself that power, the float and that timing that'll come in handy when we progress towards the snatch. Second side just warming up those swings. Bell doesn't have to be too heavy just something you feel comfortable with. At the top again, that swing, we swing to chest height. Extended arm, but shoulder packed, and then letting it Ooh. fall. So we'll give move those bells around. Lauren, her kettlebell back for the get up. I have <laughs> mine here. And we're going back to the ground. Maybe hands, maybe no hands. And we get up on both sides one more time. All right. As we know, it starts in the Another kettle. Another time. What? Huh? It's not one more time. I lied. Okay. Another time. All right, to the press. As we go through our get up here, breathing as you need. They are distinctive moves as we go, but they do somewhat flow together. Take your time. It's kind of like you're dancing around that bell. And then here as we press away, try to keep that back nice and strong as you come to the floor and return the bell with control. Spinning yourself around. We'll do that same thing on the other side. Are you using your body weight? Are you using a belt, light bell? Let us know how it's going. You got it. And if you need any pointers at any specific times along the way. But remember, most importantly, it's that hip drive right off the beginning. No crunches in the get up on the way up, nor on the way down. Taking your time, keeping that bell overhead and keeping an eye on it. Once you get 
through that lunge. Parking it with control. And again, standing up with no hands. <laughs> no hands. That bell is the right bell for me to do my get up with. It would be very hard for me to do my cleans and subsequent snatch. So I have my bell to do my kettlebell clean now. Lauren, talk me through it. All right, kettlebell cleans this time. A clean is a swing that ends in the rack position. We're pulling that bell through, punching to the rack, and repeating. No putting down today. In that top position of our rack, we have that vertical forearm and the bell resting on our forearm. Try not to smash your biceps. I understand they might get in the way, Ooh. but you don't need to smash them. No smashing. So instead we're gonna have that firm grip in the hike pass and a punching through grip to end up in that racks position. Now you might even hear it on yourself or see it, the kettlebell might jump in your hand from below the callus line to just above. Take a couple more seconds maybe, up to five reps. And what you do on one side, we'll do on the other. We're building up those calluses here. Remember to pumice after class. So as Ian said, you obviously need a firm grip on the belt because if your grip is too light, you will drop it when you don't want to. But if your grip is too firm on a clean, that's where you get that big loud Smashing. honk bounce. Doesn't feel good, doesn't sound good. No, Nobody not, likes it. So building efficiency and strength. So we could use some wrist guards here if we need, but also modify the grip and address the grip before we look for external ways to mitigate that crash bang. Looking so strong, Lauren. 18 kilograms strong on the clean there for her. And if that's five and five, that means we'll take that back out to the side. Always try to use your hip hinge where appropriate. And then we have one last get up for now. One last get up each side and maybe come down a different way, the easy way and maybe a harder way the next time. So I'm on my right side here and we'll be cuddling, rolling and pressing and following Lauren's cues for the get up. <gasps> Cuddle, roll and a hop, cause Lauren did and drive the hip. My cues are your cues. Mine. Oh. And then tall sit and bridge and press the floor away. We square up the lunge, high up to the tall stand, pull yourself down, open. That's a beautiful windmill. Elbow, and then to the back. Two hands and down. Well, I guess they're your cues as said by me. But yeah, it was confusing. Mostly the same. I didn't know who was the color commentator. All right, You're, I'll be the color, you'll the play-by-play -play right now. Okay. One, nope, probably one more time after this, but one more get up for right now. Cuddle, roll, press. Thinking right now that we have that straight wrist through the bell arm and just feel where that bell is resting on your forearm. You might feel some weight of that bell, some pressure on the back of your arm. It shouldn't be too distracting. If it is, we need to talk, but we're building up that strength and that's where the bell will be landing for that clean and snatch position. Oh, take your time coming up. Nice. So well, we have one more. And I know that prep. I'm done with that for now. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. Get that one. Get that out of the way. Um, we have one more prep exercise more. here. And. One arm clean to our rack position for a set of squats. Squats. We'll do three repetitions right. of our squat. It is a prep exercise, but it's, it's not, it is it. Pack it's the shoulder. It's the back muscles on the front that keeps it strong in its position out front. So it's one kettlebell clean and might adjust your stance. And up to three repetitions of the squat, Lauren's elbow is tight to the ribs, the grip is firm, and the effort is there on the up phase of this squat. When you're practicing the clean to the rack in this just one, tree trunk, don't let that bell pull you around. Adjust your stance. Now, when you're squatting, pulling yourself down, driving down in a way to stand up. Don't just plop into that squat. No plopping. We're gonna pull ourselves down with control and power up. Maybe you can even hear Lauren's yeah, power breath. For three repetitions here, it's a vertical forearm, a firm grip, an elbow tight to the body. Go over those cues, they'll come up handy as you progress your skills. How does that bell feel? Feels good? Good. One more set of squats here, keeping that elbow in tight. If you had a million dollar bill in your armpit, 
you wouldn't let it go. Definitely wouldn't let it go. If you do, I'll take it. And <sighs> shake that out. Shaking it out. All right. We said we do a little warm-up set of presses yeah. here. But what were you thinking? I thought it was a warm-up set of swings, but I'm down for either. Oh, that's right. I'm down for either. That's right. Let's do, right now, one set of presses, clean to rack, three-ish. Yep. That's a nice number, right? Yep. Three, one to three presses, put it down, same thing other side. Then we'll do our swings, and then, no more delay, the introduction of the snatch. Okay, one clean, one to three presses. Here we go. We're pressing here just to get used to that bell overhead and that we feel comfortable and steady with it up there because that's where the bell lands in our snatch. Here we go, same thing, second side. Clean it, press it. Park it. Park it. Okay. All right. We thought we'd get some swings under our belt here, so to speak. Yeah, just two quick sets. Three. Three quick sets. Mm, five, eight, ten. You can see why I do this class, because Lauren makes it sure that we get those heart rate moments in there. So Lauren will be going swings for five, four, three. Stay strong. And then do it right away again on the other side. Park. Stand up. And again, looking for five and five. Keep that heart rate up. Keep the breathing match going as well. High tension for those in your swing and a little bit loosey goose for us off to the side. Then we go. So you're either swinging with me or you're swinging with Ian, taking a break the rest of the time. In that swing, that off arm's coming with us. The hips are what's driving that bell through and that strong breathing match to keep the core in check. Getting a little bit of some swing endurance tonight also means a lot more grip. So check in with your wrists and hands. Don't rip those calluses open. You if they're on them. the verge of ripping, take a break. That's right. So we went five and five, and we'll challenge ourselves with eights here. If five is your sweet spot tonight, stay there. But challenge it if you can, and maintain integrity so the first rep looks one heck of a lot like that last repetition. It's a breathing match for those swinging and for us who just swung before. In slow, out slower. <sighs> Maybe one more recovery breath here and we'll be looking for our sets of eight as well. Whew. I always set it up with that hip hinge, preload. All right, team me in here for eight swings on each side. Couple things in between those swings. We're staying loose. Swings are a lot of tension in our relaxation time. Keep it loose so those muscles can recover. Always set your bell down with control and pick it up with control. Throughout this class, we're trying to breathe in and out our nose. That's why you might hear my pauses in talking because I'm trying to not take that aggressive inhale through my mouth. Last set here, 10 and 10. Ooh, climbing up that ladder. This will be the apex the ultimate set here of our swings for this set. So again, time your breath with Lauren, pow, slow it down with me as you recover. The feet are still heavy, the glutes are still squeezing, and the amplitude, the power, remains the same. If your bell is starting to go down, we're feeling really lurching to get it up there, stop, use a different way, or just go back to about five reps or so. Keep fresh, obviously embrace that challenge, but be safe so you can stay strong together today and next week. That's gotta be close, I know what's coming up. That's a big set. Up to, up to 10 swings here on each arm. And just like Ian said, you're not saving any energy during these swings. So swing one and swing 10 should be just as powerful. Don't save it, use it, but use it consistently. Take a second off, shake it out, check in with that grip off other arm. As you're doing this, thinking about your checklist, toes are heavy, shins are vertical because your hips are going back. That off arm is still swinging with you. We're coming to that chest height still, and we're still delaying the down or delaying the hinge until we have to. 
Let's take a couple breaths in and exhale. Two more rounds, nice inhale and exhale, both through the nose if we could, and in and out. Bye, knee in a couple more seconds here. I would like to show you what a snatch is. I'd love to see it. Great. And then we're going to break it down tonight in some pieces. We'll work on the downward phase tonight, and then next week, the up. A snatch is ballistic. Hey, watch this if you're unfamiliar with that snatch movement. And back out of the way. Hold the calf ballistic. It takes the bell from the floor of that high pass and places it all the way in the head. We'll do about three right now, and maybe three on the other side, Warren. And then I'll repeat the same thing with Warren Cuban. It goes from the floor of the high pass overhead, and then back to the high pass. What Warren's favorite cue is to do it between an alleyway. So encroach yourself in nice and tight to stay compressed and strong. That is true. So one of the things about a snatch here is all the power comes from your hips. Your best snatch is probably the one that feels the easiest. And that means you got the bell there because you went whammo and the bell just traveled up. You just guided it with your arm. It's not a press. So that means, as you can see, when Ian catches here, that arm is locked out. Close your hand at the top. The arm is locked. He has this habit of opening. Uh, at the top of that snatch, the arm is extended. So we're never catching it and pressing the bell. Okay. Lastly, what we're gonna work on tonight is the down. This down will just give your body the idea of how much weight is, it needs to take. And one of the biggest things about our down is going to be, I'm awful at this sport, like the worst, but we're gonna think about playing basketball. So it's similar to, let me explain it to you. It's similar to a free throw. Free throw. 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 So your arm will be up here. And then just do this for a second and then we'll put it all together. From here, you'll be flicking that bell. The elbow will stay high as it comes down and then through the body. And tonight we'll just park it on the ground. Okay, our first drill is going to be clean, press, and then via that free throw, bring the bell to the floor. I'll show you then, or Ian will show you. Okay, do the other arm so they can see your body. One clean, then we'll press it. We're in that top snatch position. Now, wrist will go through, park. Good, so you're just guiding it down nice and tight to the body, try to keep it close to you. Clean, press, flick, through, park. Excellent. Let's pass Pratter in that with me. Tight to the body. I go, you go. If you follow me, enjoy some rest. Otherwise, it's a clean and a press. And then pull the elbow out of the way and return it to the floor. Come on, right hand. Just one for now. We'll quickly get into a set of two. Put against a clean, a full military press, and then tight to the body on the down and return. When we like two of those, though, Laura, what's the difference? We are going to go right through the legs and then bring it back to a clean and a press. Okay, so one clean, one press, free throw through, and then clean it again. It's a very hard sentence. Press it. Free throw park. Good. One of the best drills I ever did when learning this, you have to be careful what kind of house you're in, is standing really close to, a, well, not really close, but fairly close to a wall and bringing that bell down, not hitting your wall. Thankfully, at the place we did it, the wall was curtains. So is, are you going to do your other arm? No. You do two each side, I think, or two. Clean it, press it. Now, in the alleyway, tight. Good, clean it. Press it, keep it tight, good, very nice. The further out you go, the more likely you are to herky-jerk your arm, get more of that pull, so keep it tight. Keep the shoulders packed. So it's two repetitions, a clean and a press, and then a free throw action back up into that clean, and one more time overhead, push, and pull the elbow out of the way. Return to the floor, do you like your stance, adjust if you need, and we're looking for two repetitions again, a clean, a press, and then out of the way. I almost put it down. And press again. And pull the elbow tight to the body. Oops. Just as if there's that priceless work of art in front of you, and you cannot smudge. Ones, twos. A three, three, three. All right, three in a row here. 
stick with this pattern for tonight. You might be eager to snatch that bell overhead, but check in tomorrow, see how that shoulder feels from keeping it packed, the elbow from taking that load and that grip strength. Tight to the body, nice press, and then on the through and park. Great, same thing on that second side. Now, you've thought of all of those things on your working side. What about that offside? It still comes with you like your single arm swing. Here, it's gonna swing back, swing through. That arm can end up out front, outside, but make sure it is giving you a little boost along the way. In our kettlebell snatch here, we're trying to avoid those Elvis twisty hips. So keep everything pushing forward. Like a running long jump, aim to get forward. But in this case, we're just aiming to get tall. The hips again, press through. Three on one side. I forgot I had to press that bell so many times. <laughs> on the other side. We're at breath and hold the two arms through a little bit here, but maintain that integrity piece. Nice checklist there more. It's on top the body tight and down the body as well. One last repetition for threes. Press, pull down, and then down. <laughs> we went a little bit louder with that single arm swing. We went five, eight, and ten. This time let's do a little more pyramid, where that's our apex set at three. Let's do two more sets, oh. bring ourselves to two. Of these? And we still have to do some swings too, right? Oh, All right, yeah. Ian says, so we're doing three again? Two. Two, two, okay. Clean press, snatch down. Keeping it tight to the body, through, and back to that clean. Ian mentioned those Elvis hips, hips, sorry, hips. And throughout the summer, we were progressing from our two-handed swings to our single arm swings to our cleans. And that's, again, when we were cleaning, we talked about that as well. Driving both hips through and avoiding that twist. That goes for the down as well as the up. Keep that bell through the midline as you bring the bell down. Right. So again, we have that firm grip in the kettlebells in the high pass. And even on that press, with that fluid grip, that three grips the bell as it comes down. That's two quick reps. So quick, I can barely keep up with my words. And we'll do two on the other side. One, it's a clean. Full body tension on that press. Those reps might start accumulating as well. And one more time, down the body, but this time, return to the park. Today's slash introduction number one, work in video. Let's do it one more time. Just one amazing repetition. Name your focus. Mine will be tight to the body on the down. Wait, don't move. Don't move. Oh. Let's just show how tight to the body that is. So if Ian picks it up here, he's gonna clean it. He's gonna press it. And he should be able to keep it. Oh, on my mat trick isn't, this is a mat in the alley. One more time. Clean it in the alley. Press it. And then look at that. Very good. Tight to the body. Obviously using something that doesn't have feelings. You got it. So you don't have to use it. Sorry. It's the same effort here for that team, Lauren. It's one amazing repetition up and then tight to the body. I think that's a little close. <laughs> There you go, there we go. If it's flexible like this, have a little bit of fun. An error on the side of close to the body. It's okay if you get it, as long as it's flexible like this mat. Nice one. Very, very well done. Tight, you He had it like up against my nose there. All right. We do have to make room for the hinge. Right? We do have to make room for that hinge. Okay. Well. So, one of the other things with our uh, getting better at snatches is just Swinging more, improve that grip strength, that's where it starts. So let's get back to our one and swings. I propose that we come back down. So we do tens, eights, and fives. Let's get those tens out of the way. So we'll still go on this, I go, you go away. So team more, we'll go 10 on the right hand side for 10. And nine, and the breathing matches there, the amplitude is still intact. And I won't do what I promise, but if I were to punch more in those abs, it would hurt my hand and not take away the breath. So after it clicks in a 10, that team of ours. Oh, am I doing my other side? That's what we did on the Oh, way wonderful. Up. Amazing. I'll take it, I'll enjoy that rest. But that means that we have a lot of work coming up as well. So team warriors on that second side. Beautiful stuff here. And the one thing we haven't talked about is that we're running on the rod straight position. And I love looking at the door frame behind Lauren to see how tall she is there, all five 
five, three, and three quarters of her hips through. It's true. Right. Don't forget the three quarters. Ten on each side here. One of the other things on our never ending checklist of kettlebell skills is the core. The core, as mentioned, is always braced at the top of that swing, but it's also always braced as we're hinging back. We maintain the long spine. We maintain that tree trunk-like core, even in our deep hinge, making sure that at the back we're not dumping out of that. That's when you get the ouchies. Take your time. If you do need to do less reps to keep that strong and stable, do less reps. So again, those who just swung, let's take a big breath in and a slow breath out and recover the slow breaths in mind. Cueing Lauren swings again. Not much to say here other than they look great. They look the same. It doesn't mean that they're easy. It's simple, but not easy. So this is our second side. Eight, we're coming back down that ladder. The shoulders packed. The timing is there with the breath. And Lauren staying as tall as you can in that swing. Us recovering, let's take one more big breath in. One more big breath out. We're on eights. How are those hands? How are those calluses? I'm going to shake it out in between. That goes from the arms to the ankles. Can you be loose through that whole body in between sets? Check back in with your swing if you're swinging here. We have feet rooted. Nice hinge. Core brace. Off arm swinging with you. Coming to that chest height and stopping yourself at the top. Making sure those hips are still reaching back behind you. Don't get shallow in your hinge, because then we also get that little round. We want to load the hips and not load your back. And so our last set of swings here is five. So for those of us who just swung, let's take a big breath in. And a slow control breath out. Admire the Lord's swing. Or maybe your training partner if you're training someone at home. And then here, one more time for a set of five. The shoulder blades packed, Lauren as tall as ever and the feet are rooted down. Those cues will help you in the press as much as they want. Ooh, I'm taking my breaths now. Checking in with those hands. <sighs> Shaking it out. Nice in, nice out. As we're recovering breathing or breathing with Ian, we're breathing to fill the diaphragm. We're breathing to expand. Expand in this direction versus expand in this direction. Fill and exhale. Let's do a couple rounds of that before we do our final get up tonight. Nice big inhale and exhale. Again, inhale and exhale. Inhale, hold your breath. Exhale, hold your breath. Do it again, in, hold, out, hold. One more time, in, hold, it's not frozen, out, hold. And, I guess and relax. <laughs> oh, good. So one more get up. One more get up, I say. That means We'll transition that bell out of the way. And move that one over for for it. Right. Number one. I do like finishing with that get up because I feel, feel like it just like seals in that workout. It's a nice sealant. I know. I'm just yeah. You spend a little more time underneath that bell. Your body says, "I'm still strong. I can do another get up." So this is the last exercise. Of the the final get up. One get up each side. From the cuddle to the press to the elbow. Hey, I'm looking at your belt here as you bridge and pressing away. This is where we look forward and we get those vectors pushing forward and back. And then as we come down, pull the floor together, it's that rotation in the hip to the elbow and press away and pull down. Whew. How are those forearms feeling? Mine definitely feel like they've taken some 
might have a nice little mark there. And we have one last time here. Breathe. And here we go. Cuddle, roll, press, hip, bend, pull, hand, merge and sweep. Top shoulders packed, engaged with that lat. Keeping that shoulder set so that ear is showing and the arms staying overhead through our lunge back down. Sweeping, elbow, pressing away, and then controlling that down. Take your time coming to standing. Take a breath. Great work. I agree. Oh, so next week, we'll be building on these skills, advancing our snatch to the way up. It's going to be very exciting. Stay tuned until then. On Thursday, we have our bar practice where we work on the hip mobility and core, which helps our kettlebells like our squats and our get-ups with that hip mobility and sweep through. And then on Saturday morning, our body weight strength. Sorry, it's only my eye. But also be sure to check out our Patreon page and our website. For from blog and other useful videos for finding those basics and looking forward to catching up with you again next week or on Thursday at bar or Saturday at Play With Your Strength. So until then, thank you very much for being here. My name's Ian. I'm Lauren. May you take care. May you stay strong. And let's train soon. Have a good night. Bye. Goodbye. Thanks for coming.